Hello and welcome. This video shows you how to use Houdini Need Solver Digital Asset and if you open the same file that you can download it along with the digital asset from the link in the description you will have a network like this and basically I've provided three types of needs and three types of unit cells for you to work and to connect them to the digital asset so as you can see what this digital asset does is to cover the surface of the input geometry using these unit cells the most important thing that you should know is that the final result highly depends on the uh, topology of the input geometry usually you will have the best results if your input geometry has quadrilateral topology so here is a simple example as, as you can see I have the digital asset here the first input is the geometry and the second input is the need cell or the unit cells and in this example I'm going to connect this switch node to the second input and a simple grid as you can see here it has very clean and simple topology and also it is quadrilateral so let me connect it to the first input and here you can see right away the good result for this simple geometry and of course here you can you can modify the size of the final texture using the resolution parameter so if I increase the parameter you can see I will have much finer and much smaller texture okay you can refine your final texture using this parameter or you can increase the division of the input geometry and as I told you before it's highly depends on the topology of the input geometry so for example if I increase the divisions to 50 by 50 as you can see also here in this case I have fine texture for the output result and it is very important for the more complicated geometries to increase the resolution of the final unit cells and the final texture or increase the divisions of the input geometry to cover the surface as much as possible so here for example let me let me choose the default values for the divisions and here let me connect it to a mountain node so I can have a more complicated object so let's include actually let me choose a good value for the height and here let's see the result and as you can see here you can see some discontinuity between two adjacent unit cells and that's because uh, because there is a sharp change between the orientation and the topology of two adjacent faces okay so here what I can do is as I told you before you can increase the division of the grid or you can decrease the resolution the resolution of the final output or the other thing that you can do is for example using a node like subdivide node to prevent any possible uh, sharp uh, changes between the two faces so for example if I add a subdivide node after the mounting and you can see I will have much better results the other trick that you can use is the fuse node for example if I create a fuse node here and here for example you can see I have N1 and N2 groups and if you come and see here this node this merge node and if I create a delete node you can see which points are belong to the end one and which points are belong to the end two group so as you can see this point and this point and also this point and this point are belongs to the end one and basically as you can see here the this point will be connected to the this point of the adjacent unit cell and both of them are in the same group so same thing happens for the end two group 
so here you can see the points in the N2 group this point will be connected to this point of the adjacent unit cell okay so let's see here for example there is a there is a small gap between these three unit cells so let me enable the fuse node and let's increase the distance oops it's too much so six is enough okay as you can see now we have connected unit cells okay and please note that you will have the best result if you can apply the deformation after using this node so as you can see here let's me decrease the height and let's decrease the frequency as you can see here in this case I will have better results okay as you can see the results after using the mountain after the digital asset is much cleaner than before for the next example let's try to connect it to a box and here let me increase the size and the same as before let's create some divisions on the faces okay so let's choose a number like 15 by 15 by 15 okay let's see the result and as you can see the result is good as we expected because the topology of the input geometry is good so we'll have the nice result as you can see here this input box has the quadrilateral topology so let's see what happened if I add a divide node and make make some triangulated faces so let's see the result and as you can see here the result is not what we expected here you have two options the first one is to go back and retopo your geometry and create a new geometry or using a node like uh, using a node like topo build to collect to correct the topology of the input geometry or here there is uh, there is an option where retopo it tries to create a retopo geometry automatically so let's enable us enable this option and you can see the result in this case because it is a box it's the simple geometry so the result is very nice and this is what we expected and it tries to correct the topology of the input geometry automatically so usually you have a good result using this option if you are using the retopo option you can use the cell size parameter along with the resolution to control the size of the final texture so for example if I increase the cell size I will have bigger texture okay or maybe 20 okay as you can see the result is very good okay let's disconnect this box and let's turn off the retopo option and in this example let's use one of these test geometry and for faster feedback let me delete every part and just keep the main body of this geometry so so let's delete 
the unnecessary parts. Okay, now we have just the main body. And let's connect it to the first input of the digital asset. Here you can see the result and if I zoom in you can see you will have a good result but what happened if I use a unit cell and use a knit which is not symmetry in the both X and the Z directions as you can see here this unit cell is symmetry in the X and also in the Z direction so for example if I use this one which is symmetry along the X axis but not along the Z axis let's see what will happen so let's choose input 1 and let's see the result if I zoom in again you can see the orientations of the unit cells are not consistent and it is not what we expected so what you can do here same as before you can go back and correct the topology of the input geometry or here is an option for you to which you can use and if I enable this option you will have a better result so basically what this option does is to try correct the orientation between the adjacent unit cells and as you can see here still there are some mismatches but the result is much more much more better than before so Keep in mind that also there is option that you can use along the along with the retopo option to correct the topology and the orientation of the input geometry. There is another option here which is planner. So basically you have to use this option along with the retopo option and if your input geometry is planner like a simple grid and it has not proper topology and usually if you have a planner object it is better to go back and correct the topology and make a quadrilateral topology for the planner object the next option is use image it is self-explanatory and it assigns each unit cell a color based on the image map that you have to provide so let me for example connect the this box here and let's deselect the accurate orientation and for example let's use the previous unit cell let's enable the retop option and let's connect it to the let's connect it to a wire wire actually poly wire node okay and let's see the result and also let's connect a facet node to to correct the normal of the faces and let's decrease the wire radius for example to zero zero two maybe ah, it's too small so let's increase it to zero zero six that's good or maybe 0 0.01 is good okay that's good and let's enable the use image option and as you can see here it uses the default color map the uv color dot red 
and as you can see here the color of each unit cell is the color of each unit cell depends on the UV of the input geometry so if I for example create a UV project here and let me use polar as the projection you can see the result using this type of projection okay that's good okay that's all for the for this video and the version one of this digital asset i hope you enjoy it and i hope to see fantastic effects from you using this digital asset and i hope you and i hope to see you in the next video